What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking. Truly grateful. So guys, today I'm just having a casual ride around some neighborhood in Shanghai. And uh, it's a lovely day. So I decided to come out here and have it just a chilled ride on my 2019 Honda CV500X. And while doing so, I want to tell you about the modifications that I've made on my Honda CV500X so far since I bought it. So just a bit of history, this bike is two and a half years old. I picked it up in December 2019, brand new, a few months after the 2019 upgrade was released. And I must say it's been two and a half years of pure joy. But like with any other machine, it isn't perfect. So when you pick it up from the showroom, it leaves quite a bit to be desired. So you would have to go on and make some upgrades or add some uh, accessories to make it comfortable for yourself. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the modifications that I made on this bike so far. So the first thing I'll talk about is this windshield. So if you are a CB500X owner or you're intending to own one, um, let me just say that the original windshield that comes with the bike, if you are taller, is too short. So you might have to upgrade to a, a taller wind, windscreen just so wind buffeting can be uh, a bit more comfortable for you. Ever, ever since I switched to the aftermarket windshield, I haven't had any problems with the wind buffeting. So yes, if you are uh, not too tall, I'm guessing it shouldn't be a problem, but if you're a tall person, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be thinking of upgrading. So it is something to take note of. So the second thing I'd like to talk about is the headlights. I'm not sure about the 2022 newly released model. Quite a number of changes were made to that bike. But the 2019 version, at least for me, the headlights were not bright enough at night. So after dilly-dallying for a while, I had to bite the bullet and go in for aftermarket auxiliary lights. And I must say that it changed the lighting situation on this bike. The original headlights at night didn't project lights bright enough for my vision. Maybe so it's good for someone out there, but for me, it wasn't good enough. So I went with an upgrade. So that is something that you might want to look into. So illuminating the road and also making yourself visible from oncoming traffic is very, very important for safety. So it's an upgrade that you might want to think about if you're considering this bike. The next thing I'd like to talk about is handguards. So the bike comes without handguards. Honda has its own original handguards that you can um, sp specify with your bike. But I think there are maybe better options out there. So I went for an aftermarket one, um, just a cheap one. I wasn't looking for anything too robust because I'm not thinking about serious off-roading. And what I have here is plastic and it works really good for me in deflecting the wind, especially in winter. So it is something that you might want to consider uh, getting aftermarket on the bike so it can deflect the wind. And if you're go thinking of going uh, Adventure Pro, then you can get something more robust just so you, it can protect your hands from when you unfortunately hit something uh, so you don't hurt your hands. So yeah, it's, um, it's a very necessary upgrade, I would say, both for the cold and for adventure riding. And now from the hand guards, let's move on to the phone holder or GPS holder. So this bike doesn't come any any sort of GPS holder, but luckily Honda has provided this bar right here. Um, although it's very thin, I think the purpose of it is dual. One is to um, to make the front end, uh, especially the bracket on which the windshield is sitting, make it stronger. 
and the other use of it is to allow users to install their GPS or phone mounts, phone mount or holders on the bar. Although it's too thin, there are accessories out there that would fit, but I've seen some people change that bar to something bigger. Well, I didn't uh, because the, uh, the phone holder that I got, although it was bigger and needed a thicker bar to hold on to, I kind of added some rubber from some old tires before bolting on the the phone holder so it's it's on there snug and uh, this is definitely an upgrade that you want to have and I like it in that position because it's right in my line of sight so when I'm riding it's easy for me to glance at my GPS or my phone without necessarily taking my my eye off the road uh, this is good for safety as well so this is something you might want to consider if you're considering the 2019 or CB500X in general Let's now move on to the heated grips. So yes, Honda does provide heated grips as an add-on if you want to pay extra for it. But my bike came without it, just standard. So I had to install it aftermarket. I do commute on my bike to and from work and uh, most of the time for, for other errands. So. In winter, my hands get really chilly, and as a rider, you know that is something that is uncomfortable, especially if you live in an, in an environment where you have winter months. So I went for an aftermarket um, heated grips. The brand is WUPP WUP. I don't know if you, I don't even know how to pronounce it WUP or WUP, whatever, but that is not really important to me. What's important to me is how it works and if it's reliable. And I must say it's been about a year and a half. I've gone through two winters with it and it's been amazing. So, so it's definitely something you want to consider if you live in a cold environment. Next, I want to talk about crash bars. This one, I can't emphasize enough. Um, I've had two experiences where there was a typhoon in Shanghai and the, the winds actually pulled the bike off and it fell on the side twice, not just once, but twice. And both times I was lucky, I had already installed the crash guards or safety guards, as some people like to call them. And this prevented a bike from, this prevented any essential parts of the original bike from hitting the ground. So protecting the fairing and the other parts of the bike. So if you own this bike, try as much as possible to get any, any sort of crash bars for your bike. There are many different brands out there in many different configurations. Just do your research and find one that suits you and you will thank me later. We don't hope to fall off our bikes or drop it, but in case that happens, if you have crash guards, you're gonna be happy you did. And if you don't have it, you're gonna be sorry. So make that one time expense and save yourself a lot of money if something bad happens to your bike. The next thing I'd like to talk about is storage. So you don't want your shiny motorcycle to be stolen easily by a thief. Um, so you want to have locks to lock your bike whenever you want to ride in it, both at home and whenever you ride outside somewhere. So I personally have four locks on this bike so I have three disc locks plus the steering lock that comes with the bike. So I lock my bike in four different places to make it really difficult for someone to steal it. Unless you lift it, I don't see how you're gonna have time to break all those four locks. Unless you're really, really good at what you're doing as a thief. So you wanna protect the bike. And uh, one problem that most bikers have is when you unlock your bike, where do you where do you keep the, the locks? Because they can be quite heavy. Dropping it in your bag is not funny. And there's no clear place on the bike to, to drop your lock. So I bought this little bag, sort of a pouch from Decathlon. It's actually meant for bicycles, 
but I, t I tied it to this place on the bike, which is not intrusive in any way, and it solved that lock problem. So whenever I unlock my bike, or whenever I'm riding, my locks, my three locks are securely placed in there. I have no worries about my lock. So yeah, it's something you might want to consider. If you have an alternative way to keep your locks, that's that's great. But if you're looking for an, if you're looking for a simple and cheap way to keep your locks, this is one that you can try. You don't need now let me move on to storage, kind of luggage storage whilst you travel. Sometimes I have to carry my computer and other stuff on my way to work, and uh, it was putting. And my backpack was putting a lot of weight on my back. So I was like, why don't I just invest in a, a rack and a top box? I don't really need panniers right now. So I went in for a rack set. And then I got a Shard SH39 size box for my bike. Just so I could be able to transport things a lot easier and without putting any strain on my back. Uh, and that will keep you stronger for a longer ride. I went for the shot because I wanted something lighter. This bike is not a bike that is set up for heavy load at the back and the shot was just perfect. The weight of the shot was just perfect. Um, so I went for the shot. Some people say it doesn't look pretty on the bike, but I don't really care about that. I care about uh, less weight and uh, functionality. And so far it's worked great for me. So I'm really happy with it. And this one I'm also very excited about. I changed the muffler. I got a, an aftermarket slip-on for my exhaust, the original exhaust. I didn't really enjoy the sound that much. So the CV500Xs that come into the Chinese market, they have just one outlet uh, on, the, on the muffler, on the original exhaust. And so it doesn't have that heavy zooming sound. It almost sounds like a 150cc motorcycle and it doesn't make you enjoy when you're riding the bike. So I decided to go for uh, kind of a cheap aftermarket muffler and I must say it's been great for almost two years now. I haven't seen it affect the fuel in any way and it sounds great. So it is something you might want to consider in the Honda CB500X. And I'm moving on to tires right now. So yeah, after about a year and a half, the original tires that came on the bike were wearing out but I still had a lot of meat on it. I could go easily another 5,000 kilometers on it. But there was a problem sometime, I think, just after summer last year, where I had a huge metal pierced rear tire. It was sealed several times, but then it just kept leaking. And I was like, well, I might change these tires anyway. So I went in for Michelin Anarchy Adventure tires. But at the time, Michelin didn't have 160 size for the rear, so I got a 150, and it, it works just as well. I don't see any difference. Of course, if I'm changing tires next time, I'm going to go for 160, be it Michelin or any other brand, because just after installing these ones, Michelin released a 160 tire, probably from popular demand from uh, CB500X and other bike owners. So that 160 size was missing. Now Michelin has it. So be it Michelin or any other tires, I'll go back to 160 because that's what a re uh, manufacturer recommends. But so far 150 hasn't been bad. I haven't seen anything wrong with it. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is I recently installed a radiator guard on my bike just to protect the radiator from uh, chippings and debris um, that are flying off of the road. So. That was just an upgrade to protect the, the radiator a bit more. So there you have it guys, that was a quick quick update on the modifications that I've made and add-ons that I've made on my uh, 2019 Honda CB500X. I love them all, the bike is still very great. I mean, I don't see any reason to change it or upgrade to the new one. Although the new one might have better brakes up front and maybe better suspension, but this one is still sufficient and I'm still really, really happy with it. Once again, thank you so much for watching, guys. If this is your first time, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And until I see you in the next video, guys, ride legal, ride safe always. Peace out.